Every time Boston Dynamics puts out one of the big YouTube productions, the world is amazed. The robots dance, or they do parkour. All of which is very impressive, but it's under controlled conditions in a lab. It's not exactly a practical, real-world use. So what are those robots actually being used for in the real world? Inside this mountainside in Western Austria is a hydroelectric power plant. I would have filmed this piece to camera actually down in the turbine hall, but... Um, it's a bit loud in here! At full capacity, 150 tonnes of water a second goes down from the uphill reservoir, through the turbines in the cavern, generating 350 megawatts of power. And it's all run remotely. Switching this plant on and off is done at a control centre, about half an hour's drive that way, where they also control 20 other hydro plants. On a normal day, no one works here at all, but for safety, someone does have to regularly drive out to all those 20 power plants and check that the physical things are all as they should be. So you can probably see where this is going. We are using a robot to continuously do inspection tasks and therefore testing if this is plausible in the middle of the Alps. Energy Robotics is putting software on robots to make them smart. We are a software company and we're not building the hardware. We are writing codes. Therefore, we ask other companies to build the hardware for us or use existing robots already. We work with a lot of robot companies. We're picking the best robot for the task. Boston Dynamics and other companies build the actual physical robots and provide a remote controller that someone can use to directly move the bots around. But they also provide an interface for computer code. The robot has built-in navigation and obstacle avoidance, so in the same way that you can write code to automate things on a regular computer, you can write code for the robot dog's computer too. Your code can learn the whole site that you're working at and tell the bot, okay, find your way to this point, look at this thing, take a picture and a temperature reading, and if that picture doesn't look like it should, or there's something blocking your way, let us know about it. The robot is not remote controlled. It's doing that task autonomously. That means we teach in a certain mission, and then the robot does the repetition of the mission. But it also be, in the future, able to do something called click and inspect. That means we have a digital twin of the environment, and then we're just saying what the robot needs to inspect, and the robot plans the path towards the inspection point and get the information. The robot autonomously extracts that information and reacts based on the results. Means either it sends an alarm if it's out of the norm, or it just collects the information and then put it into the report at the end of the mission. You can send robot dogs into toxic or radioactive environments that humans shouldn't be in. But this isn't a particularly dangerous site. They let me in, after all. It's just inconvenient to drive here, particularly in winter, when snowstorms might close the mountain road entirely. This is a place designed for humans, though, which is why robots with wheels or tracks aren't an option. So it's important to have a robot which is capable to operate in human environment, because all the infrastructure humans have built have, have been built for humans. So therefore, we need a robot to be capable of interacting with this environment, meaning simply if we have a situation like here, where we need to climb stairs, we're using a robot on legs. In the substation, where we have flat ground, for example, we're using robots on wheels or on tracks. We're developing a skill which we will use in oil and gas, where many of our robots are actually working, which we call man down detector. So that if the robot detecting someone lying on the ground because of whatever incident, then the robot sounds an alarm and therefore bring in the troops to help the person lying on the ground. This trial will succeed or fail based on two questions. First, does it work reliably? And second, if so, is it cheaper overall than sending out people, particularly when there might be a shortage of engineers soon? The goal is to support human inspection and on the long run to replace certain parts, especially those where humans need to be sent in hazardous environments. In Germany, we have about 8,000 substations. All of those need to have inspection and the number of uh, substations is growing due to the change to renewable energy. We need to have more robots on the ground because we have not enough engineers in the workforce right now, and we need about 400,000 more in the next 10 years. The robot can perform up to 12 hours of inspections, 60 minutes walking around, 60 minutes charging, so a lot of inspection every day. So the next few years, we're also testing assisted manipulation, where the robot is with a human doing manipulation tasks within infrastructure environments. In the future, there might be fully autonomous manipulation, but that is probably some years to go. If this works, and if it gets rolled out, then the power companies will be saving employee time, and therefore money. In the same way that 20 power plants can now be controlled from one centre, 20 power plants could be inspected from one centre, with actual human engineers dispatched only when there's actually something wrong that needs to be fixed. And I suspect it will be a while before the robots start to take over that job as well.